Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an ancient V7900 AMD workstation graphics card. Years ago, this would have cost its own at about $1,000. And in 2020, well, it's not capable of much. However, it can still play Grand Theft Auto 5 and GTA Online, which was quite surprising. And it will hit about 30 frames per second in single player with the lowest settings at 720p and about 25 to 30 frames per second in the online mode, which again, isn't too bad considering that this card no longer supports, well, it doesn't support anything in terms of new games. It doesn't support DirectX 11, so you are limited to DirectX 10 titles. Now, to be honest, I don't really know why I purchased it. Uh, it was cheap and pretty crappy, and I seem to be attracted to all graphics cards that fit that description. So, yeah, that's probably why. I did, however, then think that this was a perfect time to try out Google Stadia, Google's very own cloud gaming service. I'm a pretty big fan of GeForce Now from NVIDIA. I think that's a really good cloud gaming service. With that, you have to own the game, and then you can sign up basically for NVIDIA servers for about a five or a month, and then you play your games through the GeForce Now service after downloading the program on your PC. The footage is then streamed back from one of NVIDIA's super powerful computers out there in the world. And yeah, all in all, it works pretty well, I think. And it's ideal if you have weaker hardware that can't run the game natively directly from your PC. Google Stadia, on the other hand, well, it's been out for a while. I never reviewed it when it first came out. And uh, I thought I'd give it a go today because I do have this card. And I thought, what else can I use it for aside from a doorstop? And uh, yeah, I, I think my experience with it so far has been a pretty decent one. So I want to talk to you about that today, a little bit about Google Stadia in late 2020 and whether or not I think it's worth it if you do have weaker hardware that can't run games. Once I had signed up, logged in, I was greeted with a page that uh, showed me a few games that I could claim and play for free right now. Among them were titles like PUBG and Sniper Elite 4. So I quickly claimed those, tested my internet connection, as you can see here, and then decided to jump straight into it. Now I did this with my 3070 still in the system, so it was time to switch to the V7900 to see if this would actually work. Now I didn't really have any doubts about this working because Stadia is of course software based and as long as you can get to the Stadia website, which I did through Microsoft Edge, yeah, it's actually a lot faster than it used to be, um, then it should work for you and it pretty much did. The only trouble I had was with the card itself. It's an old card and it wouldn't display a signal on my 75 hertz Samsung monitor. So I had to switch to an old HP monitor that I had lying around, which actually outputs at 900p with 60 hertz. So yeah, I don't know if the card just doesn't support anything higher than 60 hertz, or there was a problem with the HDMI to DVI adapter that I had to use. Anyway though, I'd installed the drivers, uh, the latest Windows 7 drivers, which happen to work on Windows 10, headed over again to the Stadia website after restarting the system, and sure enough, everything worked. And I was back to where I was before when I first fired up the service. I usually use a wireless connection, but I decided to hook my system up to the router directly today with an Ethernet cable, just for more stability. And the speed didn't really increase, it was still about 55, 60 megabits, but I thought with a more stable connection, then we're bound to see, hopefully, better visuals and a more consistent experience with Stadia itself. So with everything set up, I jumped firstly into Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Now, unlike GeForce Now, uh, which streams directly from a PC and allows you to change the in-game settings, there is no adjusting anything graphically here. What you see is what you get. I have recorded externally today to try and maintain the quality, but obviously YouTube compression and rendering through Premiere Pro will have slightly damaged the original quality a little bit. But yeah, what you're seeing here probably isn't quite as sharp as what I actually saw. It's certainly a lot better than what the V7900 could do on its own because, well, it won't start the game, much like every other game these days, apart from GTA. 
Now there was a little bit of noticeable latency. Let's say when you press the trigger to shoot, you could just about sense a very small delay, but it was nothing too off-putting. That's the best way I can describe it. It was fine and it was actually worse in some games than it was for others. This was probably the worst example. Yet when I switched to Doom, um, which I actually purchased through Stadia. This seemed to run a lot smoother. This is a first person shooter, so you'd think that latency and things would be a little more noticeable. But my experience here was actually really good. It was really fun and the game looked very sharp. I couldn't distinguish too much between playing this through Stadia and actually through my PC, unless of course, with my personal computer, I turned the resolution up to 4K. Honestly, this is another one of those services that really could be considered quite the lifesaver if you have lower end hardware. My final game then that I tested was Sniper Elite 4. Again, this looked pretty sharp on my display. It looked to be somewhere between 900p and 1080p if I had to sort of compare it to a native computer output, but things ran smoothly. Once again, 60 frames per second, and the experience overall was a pretty enjoyable one. There are also some pretty big AAA titles on here too. Red Dead Redemption 2 is on here as well, and I think Cyberpunk is also coming to Stadia. There are Assassin's Creed games here as well, so if you have a quick internet connection, but you don't have a PC that can actually run them, this may be a decent way to go, but of course it's all down to individual preference and whether or not you'd rather pay this monthly subscription and then buy the games or you'd rather save up, purchase a better graphics card and then buy your games through traditional platforms such as Steam. So it's entirely up to you. I think both Stadia here and GeForce Now are good for different reasons. GeForce Now, you just pay the subscription fee and then you can play games you already own through Steam. And then let's say you get a better graphics card, you've still got those games to play. But Stadia, honestly, I can see the appeal. Um, but yeah, as long as it's continued to be supported by Google, of course, and games are constantly added to it. Anyway, there are my thoughts on Stadia after using it with my graphics card. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you use this service and uh, why you do and let me know if you use GeForce Now instead and why you do. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.